A woman at the farmer's market with a beautiful bunch of kale recently told me she was afraid to take it home because her husband had recently been prescribed Coumadin and she thought it would be too dangerous. I thought to myself, where have we come in modern medicine when pills take precedence over options that Mother Nature provides us um, that may have equal if not superior um, a value in treating the same diagnostic problem? I have often thought to myself, what would happen if we started thinking of ourselves not as a barren desert, but a new rainforest with a lot of potentially economically valuable solutions to health problems that would keep us from having to ship so much money to New Jersey in exchange for truckloads of medication? Recently, at the uh, Natural Products West Expo in Anaheim, the steady flow of high-level and prominent chefs and food writers at the Gila River Indian booth screamed pretty loudly to me that we're sitting on a treasure trove of superfoods that we need to start taking seriously here in Arizona. It is no accident that the cactus is on the Mexican flag. It's deeply entrenched in their culture, their kitchens, and in their health practices, and we need to start, to start taking it seriously. If you've never had nopales, it is very tasty in scrambled eggs, in salsa, and did you know that it actually can help to prevent Alzheimer's with a chemical it contains called choline? It can help reduce your cholesterol, and, and it's also anti-diabetic. Mesquite, those nasty beans that mess up your patio around monsoon season. <laughs> if, you're, if you're celiac, the flour is gluten-free. It's also low glycemic, anti-diabetic, and pretty darn tasty in any pastry you choose to add it to. It goes very well with chocolate. Tepri beans, which is what the Gila's were displaying in Anaheim, are being researched by prominent researchers all over the world looking to solve famine in drought-ridden regions like Northern Africa. And we have them right here in our backyard. We're very, very lucky. Cactus fruits. Um, what you see on the left is choya buds, which are supposedly tasty in, the, in a way that artichokes or asparagus are. And the red prickly pear fruits and the sour fruits that you see on the right happen to be very high in the very same brain-boosting um, anti-aging capacity that blueberries are. I like to call them our local blueberries. Very, very high in antioxidants. Eat them when you can. If you're a salmon lover, take note. Trout, by most, uh, by most chemical and genetic um, analyses, is almost exactly the same thing as salmon. Many aquacultures refer to them as landlocked salmon, and ounce for ounce, they have the exact same amount of omega-3 in them, but they're much more carbon friendly to Arizonans. This is not a political statement at all. <laughs> this is rather a tribute to the fact that we, we are home to three very high quality varieties of nuts. In southern Arizona, we grow many pistachios and pecans, and we, in northern Arizona, we have pinion nuts. Um, and if you do the math the way that it should be done and not the way the walnut and almond people want you to look at it, they actually have better fatty acid profiles than the nuts that get all the press on television. <laughs> Beets love to grow in Arizona, but they also hate high blood pressure. 30 minutes after drinking beet juice, it's been shown that your bl blood pressure will drop. And so I encourage you to start drink drinking more beet juice and taking fewer medications if you like beets. The purple that you see in many of the foods that grow in the desert and in the foods that are cultured in the desert is actually that, that blueberry antioxidant and it acts as a sunscreen in many of the plants that we have. It keeps them from dying before they get to the point where we can eat them. So anytime you see a purple food, like these six that have shown up at our, our downtown Phoenix farmer's market in the last couple of months, you know that you're eating lo your, your, our local version of blueberries, but you get to get a whole lot more variety in the process of doing that. I don't think there's an untasty thing on that slide. These are, these are pictures of antioxidants that live, that live right in, within a mile of my home in central Phoenix. And I feel very sad when I watch people drive past the pomegranates and the grapefruit that they rot on the bushes while they're on the way to the store to buy their acai and goji. <laughs> um, what, what I would like to encourage you to consider is that if a food has what it takes to be a native food or to thrive in a farm on the desert, it is a superfood, it's good for you, and it's something that you should support in any way, shape, or form that you can. I would have to um, differ with Meryl Streep. I think produce managers, chefs, farmers, and ranchers have much more to do with our health than doctors do sometimes. And I would encourage you to think more along the lines of my favorite physician, Hippocrates, and consider that we could all let Arizona's food be our most wonderful medicine.